back again with another video and today we are going to look at the difference between HTTP parameter pollution and mass assignment. I choose this topic because because the exploitation of both of these vulnerabilities are kind of similar. For example, in both of these vulnerabilities, you basically inject a parameter and the application responds to it in a weird way. So let's have a look at these examples first. Here I have created a mini lab and it's running in Docker. So this is the example of HTTP parameter pollution and it is running on localhost port 8080. In HTTP parameter pollution, you can exploit the vulnerability by sending multiple parameters with the same name in a single HTTP request. For example, in this case, if the application expects a single user parameter, the attacker might send another parameter of user but with a different value, for example, admin instead of guest. So let's insert another value and see how the application responds. And instead of hello guest, this time we are getting hello admin. So this shows that the application is taking the second parameter or giving priority to the second user parameter more than the first user parameter. Why is that? Well, this is called precedence and it depends on the technology that is being used in the backend. So in this case, this application is using PHP and case of PHP, it uses the second one parameter. For example, if there are two parameters, the PHP will give more value to the second parameter. Now this can have impacts depending on the application. For example, if the application is retrieving the user parameter directly and using it to construct a SQL query that returns data based on that user parameter, then this could lead to exposure of sensitive information. For example, in this case, the user value was changed to admin. So we would be able to see the data of admin or any other sensitive information like email or address. Uh, it totally depends on the application how it's going to act. But right now we are only looking at the behavior and how it is exploited. So we had a look at the HTTP parameter pollution. Now let's have a look at mass assignment. In mass assignment, you also exploit this vulnerability by sending additional parameters that the application do not expect or validate. For example, let's have a look at this lab. So this is also running on board 8080 right now and there are two input fields here, username and password. So it is a simple application. I'm going to type username as Medusa and simple password. And I'm going to intercept this request in Burp Suite. And I'm going to send this to repeater. And this is how the response looks like. Username, password, and is admin. It says no, no. This is very broke. <laughs> because it's literally revealing you another parameter that exists, which is is admin. So you can try something like this. You can type is admin as another parameter. So basically, again, you are injecting another parameter in the HTTP request and set its value to true. Basically, a Boolean value. Send the request again and you'll see the is admin value is changed to yes. So basically, Medusa user is admin now and, and she has admin privileges. Okay, so... As you can see, in both HTTP parameter pollution and in mass assignment, you basically inject another parameter and the application acts in a weird way in both scenarios, but they both are really different behind the scenes. First, let's have a look at the vulnerable code of that PHP application of HTTP parameter pollution. So here we can see that this code is fetching the user value and then it is directly inserting that value in SQL query. 
so the application is not validating the user input and also is not using any kind of protection in the backend for example prepared statements to prevent sql injection but anyways our focus is http parameter pollution so a user injected another value and since it's a php application it gave more priority to the second value and the second value got in that sql query so sql query doesn't check anything it's just no okay i have to fetch values for this particular user and then it just gives the response back to the user so this is how the backend code looked like for the situation now let's have a look at mass assignment mass assignment would be totally different scenario in this case, the application automatically binds all the provided parameters to a user object. So basically, an attacker can set properties they should not control. So what is an object here? An object is an entity that can hold multiple properties. For example, a user object. A user object can have properties like username, password, and these properties can correspond to columns in the database table. So sometimes there are some objects that the user should not be able to control in this case is admin because the user is able to set the value of a particular property that they should not be able to access and that causes mass assignment vulnerability so as you can see there is a huge difference in this case in case of mass assignment that parameter that you are adding in the HTTP request actually already exists in the backend and you are just changing its value. So sometimes you won't know if the parameter exists or not or if there is another property that exists or not but you can find it by analyzing the application for example in last case the application revealed it itself that is admin is false so you just guessed it and changed its value to true. In case of HTTP parameter pollution, you are basically exploiting a web framework or a library that accepts input based on parameter precedence. Now, it's okay if they have this functionality, it could be useful in some cases, but there should be some piece of code that verifies if there are a single parameter or multiple parameter in the same HTTP request. For example, you can configure your web server or application to reject requests with duplicate parameters. Like in Apache, you can use mod underscore security module to filter and block such requests. So there are libraries and web frameworks like that. Or you can just simply use a strict input validation to check for unexpected or duplicate parameters in the HTTP request. So I hope you get now how they both are working behind the scenes and how they are different even though the exploitation is kind of similar now if you want to know more about http parameter pollution you should definitely check out my previous videos where i explored with multiple examples reviewed reports so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed watching this video and i'll see you in the next one